Terrence Oglesby, Texas A&M, Tennessee. Who's winning later today? Man, that's a tough one, but how well is Buzz Williams playing and how well are Tennessee's well, guards is- playing? Well, no, his team playing. How, how well are the Aggies playing, being coached by Buzz Williams? He's got his kind of guy in there. I've called it. They've kind of snuck under the radar all season long, and they just continue to be good, and they play so stinking hard. Tyrese Radford, Henry Coleman, those were perfect additions for what Buzz likes to do. That Aggies team is tough as nails, but I said Tennessee's top-end talent last night. I kind of worried about it a little bit. Kennedy Chandler and uh, Zakai Ziegler today were terrific. If their guards play well, they're going to get some offensive scoring pop. I don't know that they have it with a ton of consistency, but their defense is going to be able to hold them up against some teams. If they have a couple of good games, or if a couple of good offensive games later in the tournament, you could see Tennessee definitely make it to New Orleans. Yeah, and, and the one thing I will say about them is that they are different now than they were at the start of the season. They are, they're playing those two guards together much more. They're playing uh, Mc- Plavsich. You're, you're, the, you're the guy that knows all those Eastern European names. What's his name? Plavsich. Euros, Euros Plavsich. Euros, they're playing him a lot more at the five. Your boy Folk, he's, you know, he hasn't, since he got sick, he hasn't come back and been the same guy. So they've they've made the adjustments. They've kind of changed what they wanted to do. They're making shots a little bit more, which is kind of fair to say. And I'll tell you guys this. Since on January 15th, they lost to Kentucky by roughly 643 points. I don't know what the exact final score was. I'm not really a math guy, I'm not a numbers guy, but they lost by they lost by a lot. They got run out of Rupp Arena. Since then. They've been the number three team in college basketball, according to our friend over at BartTorvik.com, uh, the, the, T, the, the T score or the T, uh, T rank, um, T score. T, score, the T rank, whatever it is that that's the, whatever his mention, whatever Torvik's metric is called. I can't remember what it's called, but T score is. no, I don't, I don't want to know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> feel the 68 after dark. It Good. never, never fails to disappoint. No, but the, the larger point is that, Tennessee found a way that works to play by changing things that didn't work for them. Right. And you got to get credit. Like Rick Barnes gets a lot of heat for, for, I don't know, not being able to coach or running the ball out. This, that, that, that. A lot of people said that when those people are idiots towards, towards the end of his career, Texas. Right. Um, but what he's been able to do with this Tennessee program turning around and th- this season to me is the perfect, perfect example of that. He's playing two guards. He's starting two guards that are freshmen that are under five eleven. They've been the top five team in the country since the middle of January. How about the emergence of two big men for Tennessee, too? Juros Plavsic. You like that, didn't you? Great pronunciation. You like that one? Well, I got a little Eastern European on you right there. Uh, I, didn't know I, had that I, I got a little bit. I got a little bit. But Brandon Huntley Hatfield started for them tonight, played 22 minutes. He's somebody that's developed uh, some level of consistency. That guy's supposed to be a high school junior. He is uber talented from the middle Tennessee area right outside of Nashville can really score it has some potential I think he can do more next year than he did this season I think it's going to be interesting to see if he sticks around and I hope he does because he's going to be one of these kids he's a five-star kid that's going to go to these workouts and he's going to play well and he's going to get people intrigued between him and Jonas Adu, the future of Tennessee's front court is dangerous and Rick Barnes is a perfect guy for it I don't want to hear none of this he can't coach Texas is a hard job and it's been a hard job for multiple people don't judge that. Don't judge a person's ability to coach on your job at Texas. I'll give you a name to watch out for, too, with Tennessee folks. Josiah Jordan James, six foot six junior, has averaged right around 15 points per game over the last four. And that, to me, is the thing. You said that Rick Barnes made an adjustment. Earlier in the season, on this very show, we talked about the fact that we weren't sure about Tennessee and how much synergy there was for them on the offensive end of the floor. I think as the season's gone along, they found a way to develop more scoring options through the course of the game. And that's a testament to Rick Barnes, because with a young backcourt, that's not easy to do. 